welcome to this new episode of Take a Look, the EPP's interview series on digital policy. And today we're going to take a look with Lydia Pereira. Lydia Pereira, hello and welcome. Hello, thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation. You have been a member of the European Parliament with the EPP group since 2019 for the Portuguese party PSD, uh, Partido Social Democrata. And you are also, of course, president of YEP, uh, Youth of the European People's Party, a very active member of the EPP. Uh, so I'm very happy to, to have you here today on Take a Look. And we're inviting you because, uh, along with the many other files that you're working on in Parliament, you're working on two reports related to, to cryptocurrency. Uh, now we are hearing more and more about crypto in the news, uh, also as users, of course. And just as um, many innovations and, and technologies, there are opportunities in there. But there are also many things that we have to look out for. And this is where you step in as a, as a lawmaker. Uh, now, the adoption of cryptocurrency is really speeding up. And technology typically is, is far ahead of, uh, of the regulations that, that govern it. So your work is super important uh, to try to get it right for Europe uh, when it comes to approaching it, approaching crypto cryptocurrency by uh, making sure we, we seize innovation, but at the same time, uh, we balance the, the issues that arise with it. So my first question would be for you, why now? Why, why are we talking so much about it? Why does it matter? Uh, what are some of the reasons why uh, policymakers really have to take a look at this, at crypto? Yeah, thanks for bringing this important topic and it starts being on top of the political agenda. Uh, well, um, cryptocurrencies are not that new. Um, they are now being more and more used, um, but they've been in the market since 10 years. And when we refer to the blockchain, that is um, the, the technology underlying the use of cryptocurrencies, it's also not that new. Um, uh, it's, it's more than 10 years as well. I think it's, uh, we are talking about two decades of this technology, but it's now being uh, developed in different uh, ways. We all also now have other, um, other possibilities for the use of the blockchain that it go, goes beyond the cryptocurrencies. But just, this is just to say that uh, only now um, uh, uh, cryptocurrencies are being more used uh, and therefore the reason why we have to look into that. It's very important that all uh, policymakers are well aware of, uh, of this new, um, I can call it, product. Mm -hmm. um, and if we want to make a comparison, if we look at, for example, when the use or the, 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 the use of the stock markets became more democratized, if you want, we are, that's exactly the same thing that we are use, seeing with, with cryptocurrencies. And therefore, uh, we really have to equip our um, legal framework to make sure that, on the one hand, we protect the investors, the consumers, but on the other hand, that we also harness the potential of innovation that these products bring to the markets or to the financial markets. So um, uh, if we look globally on the main hotspots uh, for um, cryptocurrencies, we of course, we have the US and we have Asia. Um, and we have a growing market in, in Europe. I mean, it's a growing market, market globally, but in Europe, the numbers are quite um, uh, interesting. Um, just uh, last year, um, uh, we had a very substantial increase of the number of uh, users of cryptocurrencies. And it's int interesting to also reflect upon the ages of these profile users. Uh, we are talking about people on average between 25 and 35 years of age which means that they will keep on using it throughout their lives, but it's also relevant, and this is why legislation has to come uh, in, in order to safeguard uh, the volatility uh, that the market brings, in the sense that there has to be some uh, investor protection um, and, and people have to be well aware of what they are using, um, but the, the indication of the legislation cannot be just to prohibit, mm -hmm. which is something that we've been witnessing, unfortunately, by some political groups, that there's this uh, kind of um, interest uh, to um, uh, somehow prevent uh, the use of cryptocurrencies instead of understanding its full um, a specter and, and, and develop legislation accordingly. So as I said, on the one hand, we have to, pr to, to provide for investor protection, consumer protection. On the other hand, we have a huge potential to harness um, innovation uh, in the European market. 
No, thank you. Yeah, and that really characterized, the, I would say, the approach of the EPP and maybe staying open to innovation, but also making sure, of course, there are some... Being prudent, yeah. Exactly, with safeguards. Uh, yeah, thanks. And, and, and coming to that, then, uh, as you were working on, on, on crypto in Parliament, what would be the right approach, in your view, to make sure that we manage, to, you know, we manage the risks but preserve innovation and opportunities? I think the way as that we normally do legislation in the European Parliament is the right way to um, uh, have the big picture of what we are dealing with. So we have to contact with the different stakeholders mm -hmm. that are involved in this market, mm -hmm. be it uh, the industry of the cryptocurrencies, uh, the big data industries, be it with the authorities. So we have to, put, to bring them together to understand what is the best approach uh, to deliver on, on, on the matter and not being just on one side of the barricade um, and with some, you know, addressing this uh, topic with some prejudice um, and, and, and sometimes even in a very much ideological way, um, which is also not good because if we look at the numbers, I, I referred to that earlier, um, it, last year uh, we had an increase of, I think, 17% of the, of the users in the European market of crop cryptocurrencies. So it's a, a, a relevant number. Um, and if we compare it to the other jurisdictions across the world, it's still uh, smaller. But anyway, it's, um, it's, it's, it's relevant or it's important. And, and so we really have to bring these people together, government, authorities, um, industry, uh, to, uh, to, you know, to fully understand what we are dealing with. And uh, in a way that does not isolate Europe from the, rest, from the innovation across, uh, across uh, other uh, geographies in the world. So I think this is the right approach. This is what I've been doing. This is my one of my concerns whenever I'm dealing with uh, legislation. Um, in particular, we are also uh, we, we cannot neglect the taxation side of that because it's very different across um, the different countries in um, in the European Union. So we we also have to look into that in a more integrated approach. We are talking about something that has also a big impact in the digital single market. Uh, and we have to find a fair base uh, for, uh, you know, for, for both things, for innovation, for regulatory framework, and uh, for uh, taxation. Not forgetting or uh, making here maybe a, a brief note that this, the technology that we are talking about, which is uh, mainly crypto, uh, cryptography, and blockchain. Uh, in particular, blockchain is quite transparent, or it is transparent, it's not quite. It's a public, um, a public book, a public ledger, where all the information can be disclosed. And there's also um, some um, uh, aspects of that that can be interest to the fight against tax evasion, uh, tax fraud, um, or money laundering. So this is what we have to combine. Um, and this is one of the, the another, another element um, to the cryptocurrencies or to the, the, the technology blockchain that we have to look into and that we have to make sure that we, we balance uh, and we deliver not, as I said, preventing the development of this, of this innovation. Yeah, thank you. I really like what you said also about trying to understand the technology uh, as, as your legislator. Um, and that also ties into the importance of uh, raising awareness, hence digital literacy also for users. So I think this probably... Digital yeah. and financial literacy. Because exactly. uh, the other day we had uh, the numbers about uh, the financial literacy in, in Europe. And there are some worrying numbers uh, in relation, unfortunately, to my country, Portugal, which is the last on the on the on the graphic that was disclosed so i think we have to work in both ways yeah. um, it, it's digital literacy it is uh, financial literacy because people have to make informed decisions and they ne they need to know it was the same back in like maybe 15 years ago when we had the financial crisis a lot of people had signed uh, some derivatives products that they didn't fully mm -hmm. grasp so um, here we have the possibility because all the information related to 
um, this topic of cryptocurrencies, cryptographies, crypto assets, NFTs is available online. We just have to make sure that people have access to it and which they normally should have and that they understand um, the complexity. Um, I'm not saying that they have to understand the ash functions that uh, are uh, the the basis of blockchain i'm not saying that but they need to understand that we are dealing with a new product it's still very volatile we have also nfts which are quite um, interesting to follow and a bit funny if mm -hmm. i can say mm -hmm. but they have risks and we have to balance those risks and that's what this regulatory framework that we are now discussing wants to bring Thank you, and it's definitely not a trivial topic, and I'm sure it's in good hands uh, with you. Uh, I have a very uh, quick final question. Uh, I was wondering what kind of a person you are online yourself, if you're more a fan of podcasts or streaming videos or social media. Well, I, I like both uh, podcasts and, and streaming. Um, actually, I think streaming is, is, uh, is probably the future of entertainment and, and even education. We see a lot of potential on that front. Um, but I'm a big fan of podcasts. And as I travel a lot, uh, it's always a good way to keep um, you know, track on something new that comes up, like a book or a comment, uh, political opinion, um, or even history. So I follow some podcasts uh, related to these topics. And I'm very much one of fun of them. And I even have one my, my own podcast, which is uh, uh, something that I very much uh, cherish to do, uh, where I have different. Well, it is in Portuguese. In in Portuguese, the the title makes sense. In English, I'm not so sure. Um, it's called Europa Meias. So it's it's basically it's a funny um, a funny um, really. Yeah, it's a, fu a, fu a funny way of saying that uh, it, we, we talk about European solidarity, basically. It's the topic, uh, oh, I mean, it's the, the, the title of the podcast. And then we discuss uh, with several, well, I even had the, the, chan the chance to speak to influencers, uh, speak to other publics, and basically make use of the social media as we should do in politics these days. I mean, we have to be where people are and we see growing online communities um, we don't know if they, I mean, if they follow EPP, for example, if they're going to vote for EPP, but at least they know the message of EPP. So I think there are good um, you know, channels to communicate our work as politicians. It's also a way of uh, providing some accountability um, and, uh, and, and, and as, as well as checks and balances. So people know what are you doing, what are you not doing, they can question. Um, and I'm very open to that and I have many questions coming from Instagram, from Twitter, from Facebook. And now I'm even considering to have a TikTok account. So uh, we have to, to we have, yeah, we have to, you know, um, make ourselves, we have to be innovative as well and use the potential of the social media as well as not ne neglecting the importance of, of the media, of press, um, but of course having the chance to speak to one another more openly and uh, easily. I think this, uh, it's a good way of being in politics. Well, thanks. Yeah, we have to be where people are. That's what you said. And it sounds, sounds great to me. That's Thank also you. what we are doing here today. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for joining uh, Take a Look and being there with us today, uh, Lydia Pereira. And thank you all very much for following us once more. See you soon again on Take a Look.